episode 14 of the Comic Source. I'm your host, Jace. The huge news in uh, comic circles these days is the rumor that Marvel's actually going to end X-Men. There's some event that's coming up real soon uh, called Time Runs Out. People have been speculating whether Marvel's finally going to do a reboot a la DC's Crisis on Infinite Earths from nearly 30 years ago. Marvel's never completely rebooted their universe, but the rumor is they're going to reboot their universe. Mutants will be no more. The reasoning behind this is because Fox owns the right to the X-Men franchise and it's the ones who are making the movie. Marvel's not real happy that Fox is making money off of their story ideas. So it's been this way for a while where uh, creators that work on the X-Men properties are encouraged not to create any new characters because any new cre characters they create in those X-Books would be uh, new fodder for the Fox movies. So whether or not this is true, Time will tell. It's certainly an interesting idea, and uh, we'll, I guess we'll see in a few months what exactly time runs out means. Over on the DC side of things, uh, the news is a little less world-shaking, I guess you'd say. Jason Moma has been confirmed as Aquaman in the Batman vs. Superman movie, and there's some talk of maybe even an Aquaman solo movie. This has been casting that's been rumored for a long time, so it certainly comes as no shock. Now, the books that I'm going to cover in this episode are the Green Lantern family of books which comprise the Uprising crossover. The two books that it covers are Green Lantern and Green Lantern Core. Those are both issues 31 through 33 of each respective book. Now Green Lantern is written by Robert Venditti, pencils by Billy Tan, and inks by Rob Hunter and Jaime Mendoza with Sinclair handling the colors. Green Lantern Core is written by Van Jensen. Originally when Jeff Johns left the Green Lantern family of books. Venditti and Van Jensen were co-writing Green Lantern Corps, but since uh, issue 26, Van Jensen's been going it alone and doing a very good job. The art in Green Lantern Corps, for the most part, is hand handled by Bernard Chang. He gets a little, little assist from Moritat in issue 32, and the colors are by Marcelo Maiello. Now, ever since Venditti and Van Jensen took over from Jeff Johns, the Green Lantern Corps uh, as a whole have been really put through their paces. Uh, I almost feel like the writers don't like the Green Lanterns. They've been just so they're throwing one thing after another at, at them and really it's uh, Hal and company, they haven't even had a chance to catch their breath. So it's kind of culminated, the last six maybe eight months worth of issues have culminated in this uprising crossover. It's basically the Durlins who are shapeshifters, the Coons who have always been a very warlike race, and uh, a woman named Noel Ange, who basically is the head of a bunch of clans of smugglers. So th these three main groups have banded together and have gone to war against the Green Lanterns, and the, the war culminates in these six issues. It's nonstop action. I definitely think you should read it. Hal and uh, all the Green Lanterns are really put to the test. Like I said, ever since uh, Venditti and Van Jensen have come onto the Green Lantern family of books, I feel like they've really breathe some new life into these characters that have been around for years and years. Uh, these icons who pretty much every story has kind of been told, well, uh, Venditti has managed to find a way to give them some conflict, almost calling the question whether or not they're heroes. At the end of the day, uh, we'd much rather see the Green Lanterns win the war rather than the trio of antagonists that are allied against them. And at the end of the first issue of the crossover, Green Lantern 31, uh, we find out that a lot of the Green Lanterns have been impersonated by the shape-shifting Durlins. And I won't spoil exactly what happens, but uh, let's just say the last panel gave me chills. It was uh, a really, really powerful image. With the first issue of Green Lantern Corps that crossed over, I want to point out uh, one particular line that Van Jensen wrote. As one of the imprisoned Green Lanterns managed to get a Green Lantern ring back, the coon that was attacking him with a knife, he was informed that he was not too smart for bringing a knife to a ring fight, which I just thought was hilarious. Anyway, the whole crossover I thought was very exciting, very well done, lots of twists and turns, and they're definitely putting the Green Lantern Corps, pushing them to their limit. There's no end in sight either. Right at the end of the last issue, there's a page where we learn that this is just one step in the attack of a new uh, organization called the Shadow Empire. They said that they didn't even expect the Durlins to be able to defeat the Green Lanterns, but there's more coming. I can't possibly imagine what more Venditti, Van Jensen, and uh, the rest of the writers on the, the Green Lantern family books have in store for them, but I almost feel bad for Howland Company. They really deserve a break at this point. 
So this specific story arc is very enjoyable, but beyond that, one of the great things that Venditti and Jensen have done so far is their characterization. Hal Jordan, he's going through some things that he's never had to go through before. You know, the Guardians are missing. He's the leader of the Corps. You know, he's a, a fly-by-the-seat-of-his-pants kind of guy, usually just responsible for himself, and now he's thrust into this leadership role. He's not necessarily comfortable with it, and you see him second-guess himself and, and kind of lose some confidence, and that's uh, a side of Hal Jordan we haven't really seen before. So it certainly provides an interesting story dynamic. Over on the Green Lantern Corps side of things, we see that Jon Stewart is continually being pushed to his limit by Jensen, and also in the Green Lantern Corps, there's a lot of uh, new rookie Green Lanterns, and Jensen's done a great job of the characterization of them, giving each of those new recruits a distinct personality and realistic reactions to the situations they're in. Over on the art side of things, Billy Tan does a great job with his combat scenes. The action sequences are uh, very smooth from panel to panel, very dynamic, a lot of really awesome splash pages, and the book feels very, very cosmic, uh, at the same time uh, sleek, and uh, the colors are, are very bright. So Sinclair, Alex Sinclair, just killing it on uh, colors. The art in Green Lantern Corps by Bernard Chang, I've been kind of thinking uh, about a good way to describe it. Um, it's very emotional, very visceral. Chang's art is, is a bit more blocky. It, it's very uh, powerful, uh, very heroic. It almost reminds me of uh, a little bit of Jack Kirby or maybe John uh, Romita Jr. with the blockiness but the, the powerfulness of the art. Marcelo Maiello uh, with the colors is just doing a great job in this book also. there's a, You'll see several times uh, in the book throughout the story where he'll go monochromatic in a panel for effect and it uh, really does a great job of driving home the powerfulness and uh, makes an impact combined with Bernard Chang's art. So uh, overall, while the art styles are uh, very different, they're both just great. They're aw they're awesome. I, I feel like I would follow Billy Tan over to another book if you were to leave. And I've always been a fan of Bernard. Like I said, his his for the best word I can use to describe his art is just very powerfully heroic. Coming up next, we know that the Godhead crossover is coming. That's going to be a crossover in the whole Green Lantern family of books where the Green Lanterns are confronted by the new gods. So we definitely look forward to that. Uh, let me give a shout out to uh, all the creators on those books. We have Sinestro by Cullen Bunn with the art handled by Dale Eaglesham. Sinestro so far has been a very entertaining book, definitely sort of an anti-hero. So if that's your thing, I definitely recommend picking up that book. Red Lanterns is being handled, uh, the writing chores by Charles Soule, who always does a great job. And Alessandro Vitti is on the art. Green Lantern New Guardians which has been a very pleasant surprise for me in the New 52. I was worried it was going to be a throwback to the old uh, New Guardians that spun out of the Millennium series in the early 90s. Uh, thank God that's not what it is. It's uh, much more entertaining than that. Justin Jordan is currently handling the writing writing duties there, and Brad Walker is handling the art. Love Brad. have have met him at a, a San Diego this last year, and he was gracious enough to do a Kyle Rayner White Lantern sketch for me. Uh, I love his art, very dynamic. So if you're into cosmic stories, if you're a Green Lantern fan, I definitely recommend picking up the books. Red Lanterns is, is a little more action-oriented. I would say the Green Lantern's New Guardian almost has a little bit of a mystic feel. Uh, Sinestro, like I said, the anti-hero. Green Lantern Core, very much a team book. So there's a little bit of something for everyone. Even though they do frequently cross over, I don't feel like you need to be reading every book. Uh, in order to get an enjoyable read. If you just pick Green Lantern or you just pick Green Lantern Core, you can read them and still understand what's going on in, in the other books. The writers do a great job of, of that. So I got a chance to talk to Robert Venditti at uh, San Diego. He was gracious enough to give me a little bit of his time. So I'm going to run that interview now. So enjoy. Okay, this is Jace with the Comic Source Squad. I'm here with writer extraordinaire Robert Venditti, writer of Green Lantern, Flash, Exo Manowar, Armor Hunters, Rebellion. So, Rob, my first question is, uh, how did you start reading comics, your first comic as a kid? Do you remember what it was? Yeah, actually, I didn't read comics as a kid. I started reading comics when I was in my uh, mid-20s. Mid, uh, I was about 27 years old. And it was Kurt Busiek's Astro City, Volume 2, Number 4, which is the first issue of the Professor story arc. 
which wasn't a new comic at the time. It was a back issue, but a friend of mine recommended it to me, and I, I tried it out, and I really liked it, and that was kind of what made me decide I wanted to try to write comics. And now you're pretty much living the dream, right? It's a pretty good uh, pretty good way to make a living. You know, you sit in your house, and you make up stories all day. You get to work with guys like, you know, Matt Kent, Jeff Lemire, Josh Dysart at, at Valiant, or Charles Soule, Van Jensen, Justin Jordan at, at DC, and it, you, you sit in a room and you talk about stories, and, and you get paid to do it. So it's uh, I feel very fortunate. So from packing comics at Top Shelf to yep. working on icons like The Flash and Green Lantern. Yep. Pretty cool. Yep. Uh, what do you have coming up that has you the most excited? Uh, I'm really excited about the closeout of Armor Hunters. Uh, we've worked very hard on that crossover storyline. Only two issues are out so far. There's two more to go, plus an aftermath, but all those issues are written. I'm very proud of how the story turned out. I'm really looking forward to having it out there so everybody can see the rest of how it ends. And also, we have a big story in Green Lantern called Godhead, where the Green Lantern Corps is going to confront the new gods for the first time in their history. And we're really excited about that. It's something we've been working on for a very long time. Cool. Can't wait. Uh, anything creator-owned on the horizon? Actually, yeah. I have a two-book novel deal with Simon & Schuster. Uh, I, they're uh, what's called mill grade novels, which is for like the 8 to 12 year old set. Uh, the first one is called Miles Taylor and the Golden Cape Attack of the Alien Horde. So it's a series about a little boy who inherits a cape that uh, turns him into a superhero. Wow, that's and, uh, awesome. The first one of those will be out in uh, June of next year. Wow, writing for kids sounds like fun. Yeah, very much. Okay, well, my final question is uh, September coming up here, DC Comics has uh, all their series jumping five years ahead. Mm -hmm. So if there were a Robert Venditti five year later comic, what would the story be? Where do you see yourself in five years or your uh, hope to be in five years? Uh, hopefully I'm on Exo Man of War number 90 and uh, or 80, but I'm going to be five years times 12 is 60. But yeah, plus 30 is where we're at now. So Exo Man of War 90 and, and uh, you know, Green Lantern, you know, 93 and whatever else, you know, I just, I'd love to still be doing what I'm doing, writing comics, uh, maybe not those same series, series obviously, but uh, working with Valiant, working with DC, uh, making up stories every month, and, and, and always having something new on the stands. Cool, so you're not going to hit it too big in retiring time soon, right? Uh, no. Okay, no. great. <laughs> well, thanks, Robert. Really appreciate your time. Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay, I want to thank Robert again for uh, taking the time to talk to me a little bit uh, at San Diego. So I want to thank you all for joining me. The next episode is going to be a little San Diego wrap-up, show you some pictures, show you some sketches I got, talk a little bit about the convention. So I'll see you then.